One thing that's really important here is these legs, and in particular these feet, because this is another really special adaptation uh, that we see in tyrannosaurs. And this goes by the magnificently tongue-twisting name of the Arctometatarsalian condition. I know, it's lovely. Um, but actually, it's really worth having a word like that because it's easier to say arctometatarsalian, or at least when it is when you've said it quite a few times, than it is to say that special condition where the weird metatarsal is kind of shrunk at one end but wide at the bottom and it's kind of pinched between the other two and it changes how the foot functions. Because that's what it means. Um, but arctometatarsalian is actually easier. So, if we look at a Tyrannosaurus foot, this is the foot from a nearly complete or a nearly full size Tyrannosaurus. It's a right foot. Um, so, you have four toes. The first toe, what for us, um, sorry, it's a, yeah, it's, um, sticks out at the back a little. Um, so, it's almost like the dew claw that you get on a cat or a dog. And then three walking toes. And these are the metatarsals, the bane of the footballer. We're forever hearing about broken metatarsals. So we walk on the flats of our feet. We have both our toes on the ground and we have our metatarsals on the ground. We walk across the whole foot. The dinosaurs and indeed the birds and many other animals just walk on the toes. So they've elevated the foot and they have the metatarsals, or in the case of my hand, metacarpals, suspended, if you like, upright. And this actually already automatically kind of extends the length of the leg. It gives you a longer leg to run on. So this is actually going to speed you up, because it means you're taking longer steps for every pace. But if we look to the middle, what you'd see on most dinosaurs, in fact, the vast majority of them, in particular the carnivores, is the three metatarsals for the three running toes would all look like this. They'd be lovely long big blocks, nice vertical strips. But we see here, this middle one kind of vanishes, and it's being crushed between the other two, and it looks like it's kind of disappeared and like it's going to come out the back. But actually it doesn't. It really is being crushed, and we can see that if we could switch back up to the slides, there we go. So here it is, this is just the middle one. And you can see the, the top just kind of vanishes, it just absolutely disappears. I've actually got a real one here, so this is on loan from the Royal Terrell Museum in Alberta. It's actually from another dinosaur, it's not actually a tyrannosaur, but two or three different groups all evolved an arctometatarsal. And you can see here, totally crushed in, this is where the other two would attach. And if that shows up, okay, you can see the cross-section. It's this tiny squished triangle. So it really has completely crushed, effectively, that middle toe, or that, that sorry, that middle, middle metatarsal. And this is actually a really interesting feature, because this totally changes how the foot moves. If you can imagine you want to be a long-distance runner, every time you hit the ground, every time you take a step, um, your bones are all slightly moving. And that represents lost energy. Because if they don't, what you actually tend to do is start compressing some of your ligaments and some of your joints. And as you step off again, that springs back and you get a little bit of energy back. So what you really want to do is to minimize all of the movement. You want to have everything as firmly and tightly together as possible, because every little bit of movement is just wasted energy. And if you do this with a lovely big wavy bone up the middle, with two bones locking it in either side, you're effectively holding the whole foot together. And when we're talking about an animal that might be six or so tons, every single footstep can potentially lose a lot of energy with the bones just seesawing either side of each other and you having to hold them together. If you lock them up into a single block, that doesn't happen. Some of that energy will then go into your joints and you'll get it back on the next step. And so this is an adaptation that we see in three or four groups of dinosaurs, and they're all long-distance runners. They were all very efficient over long distances. They usually have very long legs, a light build, they have a relatively short thigh bone, which allows them to move the legs repeatedly, and that makes them both quick and efficient over long distances. So despite the fact that a full-size Tyrannosaurus was clearly a very bulky animal, they were also pretty fast. The estimates, Speed estimates are really difficult for an animal that's been dead for 65 million years, for which we have no muscles. But, bearing all of that in mind, 
something like a full-size Tyrannosaurus was probably reaching speeds comparable to an Olympic sprinter. Only the difference is, this is an animal which isn't specialized for sprinting, it's specialized for long-distance running. So it's holding that speed, probably for quite a considerable period of time. You could not outrun this animal. <laughs> no chance. <laughs>